Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on using the aggregate function in SPSS. I'm going to demonstrate the aggregate function using this fictitious data set I have here, which contains three independent variables and one dependent variable. So the first independent variable is duration. So this is the duration of the treatment. And there are three levels in this independent variable, 6, 12, and 18 week. Then emphasis, and this is the uh, area of symptoms that the counselor emphasizes during treatment. So we have three levels of emphasis, depression, trauma, and substance use. The third independent variable is gender. We have two levels, male and female. And then the dependent variable is score. And let's assume that this is a general mental health symptom checklist uh, where a score that's lower represents fewer general mental health symptoms. So the aggregate function is a fairly powerful function, and you can find it under data. Let's see, aggregate. And I'm going to reset this to default. And you can see it gives you an option of selecting a break variable or variables. And then you have aggregated variables you can include down here in this list box. So let's take a look at just the uh, summary of variable for now. And look at score. And you can see the default function is mean. So let's, let's stick with that. Uh, score mean and we want to add the aggregated variable to the active data set. So this is going to create a new variable containing the score mean. And not surprisingly this is constant. Right, so this is the same mean for every record because this is the mean for all the scores in this data set. So what might be more useful in most cases, of course, would be to divide this by a break variable, let's say gender. And I'm going to run the same uh, function, set up the same way. When I click OK, it's going to let me know that there's already a score mean in the data set. So I'm going to go ahead and overwrite. Now you can see there are two score means. There's a score mean for the level male of the independent variable gender and for the level female of the independent variable gender. So this score mean column, this variable, contains two different score means because there are two levels to the independent variable. So let's make this a little more complex and add emphasis as a break variable. So, so I have gender and emphasis, and I'm still looking for the mean. And again, it's going to let me know that there's already a name for that variable. I'm going to overwrite. So now we see we have a few more different means. And that's because SPSS has provided a mean for every combination of emphasis and gender. So if we have three levels of emphasis and two levels of gender, we should have six different score means. So we can confirm that by using sort cases, which is also under data. I'm going to sort by the score mean. Taking a look at these score means uh, now sorted, you can see that there are only five different means, even though SPSS would have generated six. And that's because the mean for the combination substance use and female is actually the same as the mean for depression and male. So two separate calculations were made, but the result just happen to be the same. 
So moving back up top, let's take a look at some of the other functions that you can perform within the aggregate function. So let's go back to where the break variable is just, uh, in this case, just emphasis. We're going to have the break variable emphasis. And again, let's keep the score mean. But this time, I'm going to click uh, this checkbox, number of cases. Now, this is going to create another variable. But again, I'm, I first have to overwrite score mean. We'll have two variables here. And you can see that we have uh, the mean and then the number of cases by emphasis. So for trauma, there are 27. Depression, there are 28. And for substance use, there are 35. And there are three levels to emphasis. So in terms of score mean, we'll have three score means, 47.89. 46.79 and 46.29. I'm going to clear these two variables and move back into aggregate, to the aggregate dialog. I'm going to uncheck number of cases. I'm going to leave the break variable as emphasis, but now let's take a look at some of the other subfunctions of aggregate. So by default, we see it's mean, but we can also select a median sum and a standard deviation. So just to demonstrate, I'll, I'll go with standard deviation and leave everything else the same. Click OK. And you can see we have a standard deviation for every level of emphasis, sort of three separate standard deviations here. I'll clear this, go back to aggregate. You can also uh, look at first, last, minimum, and maximum values. So if we add minimum, and say we want to display maximum at the same time, I just drag score over again. And remember, it's going to default to mean, and just change that to maximum. So now we have score minimum and score maximum. Click OK, and you have two new variables are created. And remember, there, since it's still divided by emphasis, there's going to be three different ranges here. I'll clear these two. And then moving back to aggregate, I'm going to move the score max out and edit the score minimum. Just to show you the number of cases feature, we have weighted and unweighted. So we'll go with weighted number of cases. You can see this gives you number of cases for each level of the dependent variable emphasis. Clearing this and going back to aggregate. I'll move that out. And I want to show you the percentages and fractions options here. So when using uh, these features, it's important to recognize that what you're specifying when you click above, below, or inside and outside on the percentages is you're specifying a value in that variable. So in this case, a value in the score variable. And it's going to return the percentage of scores that fall above that value, below that value, let's just say the value is 50. So this will give you the percentage of scores above 50, below 50, or we could specify a range. Let's say we wanted between 40 and 50, or outside 40 50. So let's go with inside. Uh, 40 and 50. So a low of 40, a high of 50. You can see it has it uh, in the name here. Has the score 40 and 50. And click OK. And those are the percentages for each level of emphasis where the score falls between 40 and 50. If you take a look at the fractions, 
they work the same way except it's going to provide a fraction instead of a percentage. So if we use the same example inside 40, a low of 40 and a high of 50, see now it's a fraction between 40 and 50, simply provides a fraction instead of a percentage. And one important note I want to include is that I've been adding uh, these variables to the data set as I've mentioned, but you can also create a new data set that contains only the aggregated variables or write a new data file that contains only the aggregated variables. I hope you found this video on using the aggregate function in SPSS to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.